We'll begin reading in verse number 7 of 1 John chapter number 4. The Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We are so thankful that we serve a risen Savior today. We've come out to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Now, Father, thank you for good jail services this morning. Thank you, Lord, for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for being a good God. Lord, I thank you as Brother Jim thanked you in his prayer for all the blessings of the week. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for breath in our bodies, strength in our, in our bodies to be able to get out of bed today. Thank you for the desires of our hearts to come out to the house of God and offer up praise unto thee. Thank you for this good number that's come out. Thank you for those that you brought home safely from vacation. Thank you for just being a wonderful God. Uh, Lord, we do pray for those that are sick. I pray for Miss Pam. I pray for Miss Sonny. I pray for Miss Crystal. Uh, Lord, you'd touch these dear folks. I pray for Brother Colton. You'd touch him. Uh, Father, I do pray for our friends in the Caribbean. And Lord, the uh, uh, impending storms headed their way. Father, I pray you'd protect our friends. And God, I pray you'd protect those churches that are there. And God, I pray that, Lord, uh, through these storms that many would come to Christ. Uh, Father, I pray that if there's any in our midst today that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray for the needs of every heart. I pray that, God, you would... Uh, just permeate this place with your presence. Uh, move in and up and down the aisles and in and out of the pews. And God, uh, arrest hearts, speak to hearts, comfort hearts. Uh, God, do a work. Uh, uh, apply a balm of Gilead. Uh, apply, apply, Lord, uh, another log on the fire. Apply what is ever needed, Lord. Uh, that when we leave out, we could say we met with the Master. Uh, and we leave out encouraged. Uh, we leave out ready to be a light and a witness to this dark and dis uh, despairing world. Uh, now, Father, put a hedge about us. Uh, bind the powers of hell. Uh, Father, have your free way and free course throughout the rest of the service. Uh, use this unworthy vessel uh, and glorify your name. And we'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the holy and wonderful and glorious name uh, of our risen Savior, the Lord Jesus, we ask it all. Uh, Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention uh, uh, to this text. In these verses, uh, we find throughout the text uh, uh, the Lord. Uh, uh, notice, if you will, uh, God is mentioned eight times. Uh, verse number seven, for love is of God. Uh, one that loveth is born of God uh, and knoweth God. Verse eight, uh, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Uh, in this was manifest the love of God toward us, uh, because that God sent his only begotten Son. Verse 10, here in his love, not that we love God, uh, we find eight times uh, God is mentioned. Uh, Eight is the number of new beginnings. Uh, I've got good news for you today. Uh, uh, if you're here today and you don't know God, uh, uh, today could be of the big new beginning of the best day of your life uh, by coming into a relationship uh, with the Lord. Uh, uh, you say, what is so special about the Lord? Uh, can I say, He is Lord. Uh, He's Almighty. Uh, hey, uh, there is nobody like Him. Uh, uh, there is no one beside Him. Uh, he is all all-powerful, uh, all-knowing. Uh, he's omnipresent. Uh, hey, uh, he's able to change things. Uh, he's able to convert things. Uh, he's able to make a difference. Uh, why? He's almighty. Uh, he's the one that took nothing and made everything. Uh, hey, he's the one that made you. Uh, he's the one that allowed you to be here today.
Uh, what a blessing. Uh, he's not only almighty. Uh, he is the authority. Uh, hey, uh, everyone and everything else is below him. Uh, uh, the stars and sun and or, uh, the uh, entire galaxy is below him. Uh, uh, all of his creation is below him. Uh, every king, uh, every noble, uh, every earl is below him. And one day we'll bow before him uh, and proclaim him Lord of lords and king of kings. Uh, Hey, he's the authoritative one. Uh, that's why we look unto him. Uh, we look unto him uh, and unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Uh, our help cometh from the Lord. Uh, can I say he's the Alpha and Omega, uh, the beginning and the ending. Uh, he was before there was, uh, and he will be uh, after it's all gone. Uh, he's Alpha and Omega. Uh, he's the anchor of our soul. Uh, he's our advocate. Uh, he is the Amen. Uh, I said he's Lord. Hallelujah. Eight times we find God mentioned throughout this text. Uh, not only do we find Lord, uh, the Lord, but can I say, uh, we find love throughout the text. Uh, nine times in some fashion in these verses, uh, we find the term love. Uh, look again. Uh, uh, beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. Uh, everyone that loveth is born of God. Uh, he that loveth, verse 8, uh, loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Uh, verse 9, and this was manifest of the love of God. Uh, uh, verse number 10, herein is love. Uh, not that we love God, but He loved us. Uh, uh, nine times. Uh, nine times in your Bible means finality. There's nine fruits of the Spirit. Why is it there ten? Because the ninth one was the final one. And throughout the Bible, nine means finality. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, that chapter is widely known as the love chapter. Throughout that chapter, you find the word charity. That is the same root word uh, that we use for love. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, uh, the last verse of the love chapter, uh, it says, And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. That's the final thing. Love. We find love throughout this chapter. Now let me say something about the love that is mentioned in this chapter. This is not the puppy love that we find in this world. This is not the lovey-dovey God that the liberals preach on. Right. Right. This love in this chapter is an untainable love without Christ. You'll never know the love that it's talking about until you know Jesus. Right. Amen. Can I say that it's not only untainable with, outside of Christ, it's an unconditional love. The Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. It's an unconditional love. God loves regardless of who you are. And God loves regardless of what you've done. It's an unconditional love. Can I say this? Uh, our life may disappoint God, uh, but our life cannot disappoint the love of God. It's an unconditional love. Hmm? Huh? My grandbaby's sleeping now. Mama back there holding her. Listen, that, that, little, that little booger may break my heart someday, but that little booger right there will never do anything to ever cause me not to love her. Amen. Hmm? You say, why? Because she came from me through him and her. Huh? She had my heart before she's born. She had my heart before we knew she was on the way. I started buying stuff for them to kind of get her, get them, you know, headed that direction. A little incentive. Can I say she had an entire world of toys waiting on her before she's ever born? Huh? Nothing will ever cause me not to love her. But can I say? We all came from God. And the sin that we was born into disappoints God. But there's nothing we'll ever do that will cause God to not love us. 
Can I say those that rejected him and died and went to hell, God still loves them even though they're in hell. Can I say it's an unattainable love without Christ. It's an unconditional love, but it's an unusual love. Look at verse number 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. That's kind of unusual. Because God loves me, and I'm a recipient of His love. That means I love you. And I love you unconditionally. If I got the right love. Hmm? I, I, in our Sunday school class, I started a new series today on the very popular subject of holiness. And one thing that I brought out, Brother Ron, a lot of churches, the preacher thinks he can make you holy by giving you a list of rules. And Brother Adrian, you've seen this like I've seen it. And people follow rules, but what happens is when they start following them, they start looking around and see who's not following them. And then all of a sudden, we're going to judge that person because, I mean, Brother Aaron doesn't follow the rules. Hmm? That's not love. That's rules. When I'm truly attached to the Lord the way I'm supposed to, I don't judge anybody. I love folks. Uh, Brother Doug, once God has put somebody in my life, they're my friend regardless of anything they ever do because I love them. Love supersedes people's failures. So I've got news for you. We all fail the grace of God every single day. But true love covereth the multitude of sins. Mm. It's an unusual love. Amen. Jesus said this uh, 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 in Matthew 5, 43. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now that is an unusual love. That you love those that do bad to you, that hate you, that despise you, that you love them. Why is that uh, uh, what the love of God does? What else will attract people? That you love them even when they don't love you. Hmm? I say it's an unusual love. In these verses, we find the Lord. We find love. But can I say in these verses, I also find the Lamb. Look at verse number 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us. Boy, it got quiet when I talked about loving people. Somebody got a love problem. You know where I found you can get your love problem fixed? At the altar. Uh, well, that didn't get real good. I want to tell you something. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. That's what the book says. you got a love problem. you got a God problem. You're welcome. That didn't cost you anything. And if that upsets you, we're going to really get rough here in a minute. thought this would be exciting for you. Everybody said, preach, why don't you preach on the love? I am, and it's, it upsets people. I'm supposed to love that person over there? Yes. And by the way, since the Lord ain't let me off of it, I'm going to quit sitting on the front row. <laughs> it is not scriptural for you to say, well, I'll love Brother Ray because I have to, but that don't mean I, I like him. You can't love somebody the right way and have that attitude. Right. I may not approve of some of the things that people are doing in their lives, but that don't mean I don't love them. And if I love them, i got to find reasons to like them. If nothing else, God loves them. Well, y'all upset. I find the lamb in verse number 9. And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world 
that we might live through him. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. We find in verse number 9 that God sent his son into the world that we might live through him. Verse number 10, we find that he sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Uh, we find the lamb. Hallelujah. Thank God for the lamb. Uh, uh, can I say in Genesis chapter number 4, we find a lamb for one. Uh, uh, can I say in Exodus chapter number 12, uh, we find a lamb for a household in verse number 4. Uh, also in Exodus chapter 12, verse number 13, uh, we find a lamb for the night. Uh, for the nation, uh, the Passover lamb and the Passover feast was uh, ordained when God said, when I see the blood of the lamb, I will pass over you. Uh, in John chapter number 1, verse 29, uh, we find the lamb for the world. Uh, John the Baptist looked up from Jordan and said, behold the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Uh, in Revelation chapter number 5, we find the lamb worthy. Uh, uh, what a blessing for the lamb. Uh, I appreciate uh, a lamb of God that was slain for our sins uh, that you and I can be saved uh, and can experience the love of God. Uh, I'm interested this morning in verse number 9 where it says, And this was manifested the love of God toward us. I'm interested in that word manifested this morning and I want to preach on the manifested love of God. The manifested love of God. Can I say that word manifest is a very good word. We find that we can know the love of God because of what Jesus Christ done for us. And that word manifest brings it all about. Can I say the word manifest means to express? To express. The word express means to proclaim or to state. Can I say God expressed his love to man at Jesus' birth into this world? And Luke chapter 2 and verse number 10, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, uh, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, uh, which is Christ the Lord. Uh, uh, God expressed that day. Uh, he cared for man uh, when he said through the angel, uh, uh, My dear friend, a Savior is born uh, uh, to save the world. Uh, hey, uh, God sent his only begotten Son into this world uh, uh, my friends not to condemn the world but to deliver the world uh, uh, to save us from our sins uh, and God expressed that through an angel he proclaimed uh, 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 all the sins from the uh, 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 past uh, all the present sin all the future sin was about to be dealt with uh, uh, through the one that was born in the city of David uh, and his name is Christ the Lord uh, that word manifest means to express uh, can I say that word manifest means to exhibit, to have a public display. It, it cracks me up when people say, I love the Lord, I don't want anybody to know about it. No, you don't. Oh, Romans chapter number 10 says, uh, if we love the Lord, uh, we're not ashamed of it. Uh, but here it goes a step farther. God made a public display of his love. Uh, isn't it funny? When mom and dad kiss in public and the kids go, ew. Making a public display. Uh, well, the Lord made a public display of his love for us. Uh, can I say God displayed his love through Jesus at Calvary? Look again at verse number 10. Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. That word propitiation means appeasement. What appeased the wrath of God. Uh, can I help you with something? Uh, God loves sinners, but he's angry with the wicked every day. Uh, God does not accept sinners in their sin. Uh, God does not even hear the prayer of a sinner uh, until he calls out for mercy unto the Lord. Uh, uh, God uh, hates sin today. Uh, let me say he loves sinners, uh, but he hates sin. Uh, he hates the sin of this world. Uh, he hates the sin of wickedness. Uh, he hates sin in his children. Uh, God hates sin. Uh, never ever uh, get it in your mind uh, that God accepts sin, uh, that God sweeps it under the carpet, uh, that God tolerates 
tolerate sin. Uh, God does not like sin because uh, sin cost his son, his only begotten son, uh, his life on Calvary. Uh, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish uh, but have everlasting life. Uh, friends, some 2,000 years ago, uh, the darling son of God, uh, he left heaven, uh, stepped into the womb of a virgin, uh, was conceived in this world. Uh, uh, the God of glory put on flesh. Uh, he became like you and I, uh, that you and I one day could become like us. And he that knew no sin uh, became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Uh, and on that dark day of Calvary, uh, he, after being beaten uh, uh, beyond recognition, uh, after having his beard plucked from his face, uh, after having a crown of thorns planted on his head, uh, after being mocked uh, and beaten uh, and spit upon uh, and cursed, uh, he carried his cross uh, than the vehicle. De La Rosa some two miles uh, and he laid and yielded himself to the cross uh, and was suspended between heaven and earth uh, and God the Father uh, forsake the Son uh, he cried out my God my God why hast thou forsaken me uh, and Isaiah 50 he says, uh, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, he took your sin, uh, my sin, uh, every filthy, vile sin that would ever be committed uh, on himself that day. Uh, he became sin for us, uh, and he nailed the handwritings of laws and ordinances uh, that we could have never lived up to uh, uh, to meet the demands of God's holiness. Uh, and he nailed them to his cross, uh, and they're suspended between heaven and earth uh, he yielded up the ghost uh, he gave his life for our sins uh, he said it is finished uh, and he died uh, and he was buried uh, and on that third and appointed morning uh, he arose victorious uh, over death hell and the grave uh, made a way uh, for sinners like you and I to have the gospel uh, the good news uh, our sins have been paid for uh, we can be forgiven uh, we can be recipients of God's love. Uh, God made uh, a public display of Christ uh, to show his love for you and I. Uh, you don't have to die and go to hell. Uh, you have your sins forgiven because uh, God uh, manifests uh, for you and I. Hallelujah. And I say it means to exhibit, to express. That word manifest also means to explain, to make clear. Can I say that God has made his love very clear in his word? So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. Brother Doug, why do we do all of our preaching and teaching from the word of God? Because that's how our faith is, is increased. Uh, that's how our faith grows. Uh, word of God uh, makes it very evident and very clear uh, that God loves us. Uh, in Jeremiah 31 and 3, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness uh, have I drawn thee. Uh, Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his love toward us uh, in that while we were yet sinners, uh, Christ died for us. Uh, and then I say, I can go on and on and on and on some 400 times, uh, uh, 442 times, I believe, in some form or fashion, you find the word love in the Bible. And can I say, even when it's talking about children loving their parents, uh, it's all byproduct of God's love toward us. The word of God's very clear. God loves you. Can I say this world will make you feel like nobody loves you? Can I say people will make you feel like nobody loves you? Can I say the sorry, no good devil will get in your mind and make you think nobody loves you? Can I say they're all lying to you? Uh, God loves you. Oh, he loves you regardless of what you're facing or regardless of where you've been or what you've done. God loves you. And can I say, I know the people of this church, they love you too. Say, these people don't know me. It don't matter. They know God. And God loves you, 
And this crowd around here has proven time and time and time again, regardless of people's circumstances, they love you too. Mm. Why do you think we go to the jails every Sunday morning? It's not to get folks out of jail. It's to get them out of prison. Uh, what kind of prison? The prison of sin. Right. Uh, therefore, family man being Christ, he's free. Free indeed. My dear friends, we tell them about the love of God. Why do you think we go out, invite folks to church every Monday night, hit hundreds of houses, letting folks know we got a little church on this hillside, invite them to church. Why? Because we love them. We don't want, we don't want to see them die and go to hell. Why do you think we support all them missionaries? Because we love folks all across the world. Amen. And we want to see them saved and not die and go to hell. Can I say, the Word of God has manifested the love of God to our hearts. Can I say, that word manifest also means to make evident. Yes. Means make it unquestionable, undeniable. Well, how has God made His love unquestionable and undeniable? Well, God has undeniably shown His love through those He saved. Can I say, in church history, there are people that were burned at the stake because they showed people how much they loved God. Can I say, there have been people beheaded because they told people that God loved them. Can I say there have been people persecuted? There have been people ostracized. Can I say even in colonial America, it was illegal to be a Baptist? Huh. But yet, Baptists still proclaimed the love of God for sinners. The Bible says this in John 15, or 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Can I say, you don't grow a church by doing away with preaching, doing away with pulpits, doing away with choir singing, do away with hymn singing, do away with uh, uh, tradition music, bringing in a rock band and bringing in smoke and darkening the lights and, and watering down everything to look like the world. That sounds more like a bar. That don't sound like a church. That's not how you're going to win the world. You want to win the world? Show them the love of Christ. Even when they don't deserve it because you didn't deserve it either. But when the world sees how much we love one another, that's what they really want. You know what this Pride Month was all about? They all want acceptance. Right. Deep down in their life, they know there's a void. Yeah. Sure. And they've tried everything to fill that void. Mm, can I say amongst that crowd, the suicide rate's much higher than it is amongst our crowd. Right. Amongst normal people. Mm, can I say... The reason they fight so hard and kick so hard, they want acceptance. Can I say what they really want is they want the love of God in their life. And it's available. Right. They just need to be willing to accept the Lord and repent of their sins. And it's a wonderful thing. The Bible talks about being accepted in the beloved. Yes. What a blessing. There is acceptance in Christ. God help us to show the love of Christ. That's how it's, it's, it's evident that we love one another. I don't know about you, but I, I've heard enough about church splits. I've heard enough about church problems. That's why people don't want to come to church. They think all churches are hypocrites. Full of hypocrites. Huh? Isn't it a blessing to have a church where we just love one another? Are we perfect? No, we got people here. Uh, we're not perfect from the pulpit on. But we love one another. Uh, we're concerned about one another. And can I say, they can say all kinds of things about us, but they, can't de they cannot deny that we love one another. Uh, and you're no more Christ-like than you are when you love people. And then I thought about this. That word manifest is engaging. 
See, we can talk about the love of God till the cows come home, but until you experience it and embrace it for yourself, you'll never know what it is. You've got to be engaged to it. In that verse again, when God told Jeremiah he loved him with an everlasting love, he ends with this, Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. God engaged us to himself. He drew us to himself. We didn't even retain God in our knowledge. We didn't know anything about God until somebody told us about him. And God used that to work in our hearts to draw us to him. That word engaging means God's love attracts and draws us to him. In Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 4, the Bible says, But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, made us alive together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Aren't you glad that God let you know that even though you was a sinner, you could be saved by His grace. That He loved you in spite of all your failure. What a God. Can I say this? A lot of times the love of God is directed towards sinners that God loves them and God wants to save them. Can I say one of the greatest tools the devil uses is a little five-letter words. I think it's got five letters called guilt. If you've known the love of God and gotten saved by the good grace of God and then failed God, that devil gets in your ear and he puts guilt on your mind and in your life. It makes you feel about two inches tall. Here you call yourself a Christian. Look what you did. And he, he loads that guilt on you and that guilt gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Makes you think, how in the world could you ever serve God again? Look what you did. How could you ever be used of God again? How could God ever forgive you? Look at you, look at you, look at you. That's the whole problem. He gets you looking at you. He gets you looking at your failures. He doesn't let you see the love of God. No, God doesn't approve of our failures. And God certainly doesn't appreciate it when we make mistakes and we sin against Him. Can I say this? Just because you step in a mud puddle don't mean you leave your foot there. Let me say this, I'm about done. Whatever is affecting her throat is starting to affect mine. I'm about done. Let me just say this. If you've been saved and the devil has made you feel like your failure is bigger than the love of God. Broken crayons can still color pretty pictures when they're in the right hand. You say, I'm just a broken crayon that's useless. Well, just commit to the master's hand and let him go to work. He still is the potter, and we're the clay. And he still does know how to do a work. And who cares what the world thinks? Who cares what the devil says? Why don't we just let the master put his hands on us? Because you know what happens? He not only takes and makes pretty pictures with broken crayons, he fixes broken crayons. Uh, I know some folks in here right now, I'm looking at right now, you're seeing them all looking nice and pretty and, and they're here serving the Lord, but you don't, you don't see where they come from. I remember when they was broken. And I remember when the master put his hand on them. And today, you don't even know they's ever broken. Why? The love of God. It goes much farther than the brokenness. God can fix you today. God can change you today. God can use you today. Because it's never about you or me. It's always about Him showing the world what His grace is able to do. God loves you, friend. He loves you where you're at. If you're here today and you're saved and it's been a while and you've been listening to all that junk 
By the way, that's where the battle is, our mind, and our mind isn't saved. But can I say this? God misses you, misses your fellowship, misses your zeal for Him. He just wants to love on you for a little while. If you're here today and you're not saved, you don't know what love's about. But God loves you, and God wants to save you and change your life. He wants to make you part of the family of God. And today, he says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And if you'll come and accept the Lord as your Lord and Savior, he'll not only save you, he'll change your life and you'll get to understand what love really is all about. And you'll leave out of here different than you came in. Maybe here today, and it's not that you, you need fixed. It's not that you need changed. Maybe here today... And it's just been a while since you felt his touch. Maybe you just need to come and start telling him you love him. You know what happens? He'll show you he loves you. Maybe today you just need to come and thank him that he loves you. Maybe today you need to go to somebody and tell them, you know what? Because of you, I'm here today. And I love God today because of you. And I just want you to know I love you too. Maybe during the invitation, God will put somebody real heavy on your heart. We don't know. We don't know what's behind the smiles people wore in here. Maybe somebody here today is really hurting. And maybe they're hurting so bad, they just struggle with stepping out and letting God do something for them. But God wants to use you. And if God puts somebody, I'm not talking about just do it. I'm talking about if God puts somebody heavy on your heart, why don't you just go to them and tell them you love them. That might be the very thing they need to once again open their heart to God. I don't know. Maybe somebody's hurting today and God wants to use you to be a balm of Gilead. I don't know. Maybe today God just wants you to go and thank somebody for being a blessing. I don't know. I just know that that Bible has a whole lot to say about love and a whole lot to say about God's people loving one another. And I'm tired of seeing this world and all the wickedness and all that. I think we could have true revival. We just show the love of God and start experiencing the love of God again. And that all comes with just stepping out and trusting God. Are you willing to become a recipient of God's love? Are you willing to show God's love? Are you willing to just let God work in your heart and life are you willing to mind the Lord today God help us to appreciate the love of God let's all stand brother Clint come get a song while he's getting a song let's have a word of prayer father we sure do bless you thank you Lord for using broken crayons thank you Lord for loving folks and their lowest estate. Thank you for loving sinners. Thank you for being known as the friend of sins, sinners and publicans. Now, Father, I don't know who needs to be a recipient of the love of God or who needs to show the love of God. I don't know anything other than the fact that's what you put on my heart and I've been faithful to do what you asked me to do. But folks need to mind the Lord. So God, give them that measure of faith. Help folks to just step out and do what they're supposed to do. And God, if somebody's really hurting this morning, send somebody by their way. And God, if somebody here is lost today, Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit of God through cords of love would just tug at their heart and help them to come and accept the Lord. And God, I just pray, oh God, your will would be manifested in every heart and life. May God's manifested love become reality to all of us today. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.